Ooh, you're still here after the first episode. That means you're a real grinder and you should be proud of yourself. But going forward, it's not going to be so easy. This is where the real work starts. Let's get right into it. And in this episode, we are going to make a timer, which drops the money. The timer is going to be the money, right? So the money is going to drop all the way to zero and we, want, we want to capture it. And we want to be able to kind of show that if you are zero, you lose a lose condition. Let's go. All right. So to make the timer work, we need to create a script. Uh, a script is going to be game manager. Game manager is going to oversee everything in this game. All right. So in the scripts folder, let's create a game manager. And in game manager, we need to create a class name game manager. That means this is object is going to be of type game manager, so we can call it from other places. And also, this is also very important. We do init and do add to group game manager. You don't need to worry about it too much, but just write this in and in later, um, later episodes, it's all going to be clear. Basically, by adding it to a group, uh, we're going to be able to call this from wherever else in all other scripts, this exact object. And also, we need to add it to the game. So it's the game, right? And we drag this script onto the game manager, on the game manager, onto the game scene. Okay, so now we have a game manager working. And in the game manager, we can start uh, writing some things. We can say what is going to be the starting price of Solana. Okay, so we do something like this export and you will see what export does. And naturally, uh, we just do variables like uh, var start uh, price and it's going to be a float with, let's say, default value of uh, 20. All right. So if you see when I save it, this is just a variable which I can later use. But if I add export right here, you'll see what happens now. See, this opened up. That means export means it makes your variables adjustable from inside the editor. So you will not you would not need to go to script every time and adjust the, adjust the value. You can do it right from here. This is a very important thing to remember. And these are two very important functions as well that comes when you create a script. Uh, one is ready. This is the function that runs once when you start a game. So we can try it out. Start. Okay. And you will see down here below in the console, start should appear here. So we go into, uh, we play press. And when the game starts, you see right here, it says start. Okay. And also there is process. And process hits every frame. So check this out process. Let's do it once more. Let's play. And you will see now that it's just a bunch of processes and it keeps on going. See every frame, a new process jumps in. And if I quit now and I go to the very start, see the start hits first and then process every other frame. So we will need to use this process and start to set uh, the price. We can do curve price because um, we will need to know what is the start price, make it the current price and decrease that. Curve price, which is a float, is going to be uh, nothing for now. And in this ready, we're going to say curve price is start price. Okay, so we, we're working with this one. In the start price, this is just something we assign so that in the game we can have this current price. And in process, we can do something like this. Curve price uh, minus equals it means minus or uh, minus equals is like a short term for doing something like this. Uh, so curve price equals curve price minus uh, delta. Okay. So, but uh, if, if you want to shorten it up, so that means every frame the current price is going to drop by this amount, and delta is basically means the um, the time uh, the time between two frames. So if we just do minus one. Uh, it's going to be very difficult to keep track because each frame we're going to lose one and 20 frames is going to be split of a second. So we do delta so we can say that it's, it's basically a better way. It, 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 you will need to figure it out. Basically, delta is quite a difficult concept, but for now, just know it, it makes it uh, decrease better. Um, cool. So as, as a shorthand, let's do this minus equal minus equals delta. Okay, and we can actually try and see uh, how this looks. So print uh, curve price, and let's see how does this look. See, it's going, it's going. 17, 16, 15, 
quite uh, slowly. So actually, if I just do delta, this means current price is going to decrease by one every second. Okay. What we can do is we can add another parameter, export var um, uh, dump rate, which is also going to be a float. And we can do, let's say, three. So it's going to be three per second. All right. So we can do minus delta times dump rate. And now it's going to decrease much quicker. You'll see here. See, it's going three times as fast, much faster than, than before. And the problem you'll see is that when it reaches zero, it starts going into negative numbers. And when it reaches zero in our case, we need to say that the game is over. We need to stop the timer and we need to print out lose. OK, so we're going to do this. Um, game active. Let's see uh, our game active. Mm, game, let's, OK, let's do game active, which is going to be a Boolean. Uh, and if the game is not going to be active, we're no longer going to call this this thing. So uh, if a game active, if not game active, then we return. So if it's, if it's just not going to go through if the game is not active. So and we can do this pass with a need pass just don't worry about it too much. It's just that if you just don't have pass here, you'll see if I have nothing here, it will say that error here that you cannot have nothing. So if pass means that like pass this, don't worry about it too much. No, nothing in the script, but nothing errors. OK, but we already have something, so we don't care about it. OK, so current price is dropping by this much. And now we can say if uh, current price is less or equal to zero, let's, by, let's just uh, do current price equals zero. If it's less than zero, just to default it to zero. And then let's say game active is false. And we need to see here to start it off with is true. So the game at first starts with true. So this game active is false. And we can also say, uh, ouch, dumped to zero. And let's see if this is actually going to work out. Let's watch the console. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and boom. Ouch, dumped to zero. So this was still, see, minus zero, zero, seven, blah, blah, blah. But we set it to zero just in case. So ouch, dumped to zero. And now we have a working timer. Um, what I think would also be pretty cool uh, would be to add, um, to add a way to show in game here, right here. Mm. So we're going to add control. Control means UI, and UI opens up in 2D. So this is a 3D game, but in 2D, you can access UI. Let's stretch it to be like, uh, to go uh, in full screen. Let's do like full screen right here. This is going to be our game UI. We call it GUI. And let's add label. Label is going to be something that shows us something. Uh, current Solana price is going to be, let's say, 20 dot five zero dollars of course let's make it a bit bigger in, in, in font size something like that uh, let's do uh, horizontal alignment left I think that is okay auto wrap off so yeah it, this is just gonna be something to show you the, the price and if we go into the game right now of course nothing is gonna work because we just added some sort of a, a label which doesn't do anything it's just like it's slapped on top of UI OK, so what we need to do is we need right now to just show uh, this updating 2050. We need to show what is the actual current value. Let's try to do it. I think it would be very good to create another another script uh, for UI because we're going to use a lot of UI uh, going forward. So we're going to do GUI. And we also need to create a class name of GUI. And this is going to be very interesting. So we're going to do a price indication. We just call it price indication. And you'll see a very interesting thing that Godot offers. So you remember export to show the variable in the editor. There's also on ready a var um, price indication, which is a label. And it is going to be this. We just drag it in here. Oh, it, it says GUI because there is no script attached. So one second, we're just going to do this. Let's add the GUI right here. And now um, let's just add it right here. See, there's gonna, no, no, not going to be GUI slash because it just basically fetches on start, on ready. Whenever the game is ready, this is going to be set to this thing. So if you rename it to something, it's going to fail because it's looking for this exact name. 
all right? So let's not rename it, let's keep it like this. Uh, on ready, we're gonna have this label. And what we can do is in process, this is where we're gonna uh, be able to get the game manager. In the game manager, we also want to be able to fetch the current price. So let's do function get current price, and it is going to return a float, um, a number. So whoever calls it gets the float. So get current price, return uh, core price. Should be easy enough. And here we're gonna do something very interesting. So we do game manager, game manager, and in ready right here, because in init, init goes one, time, one step before ready. Init triggers before ready, okay? So uh, this is already gonna be initi initialized. So we can already call game manager. So we can see game manager is get tree. Get tree is basically this. You can see this game is also part of the bigger tree. So the tree controls everything. The game tree and everything else is nodes, like leaves of the tree. So get tree is a very very powerful function from which you can call different things. And we can do get tree, get first node in group. You remember we added game manager group, add to group, right? So we can say game manager. And because this is the only thing in group, so we just get the first node and we're gonna have here game manager. All right? And now we can do something like this. Price indication dot text, because label has a text. Label itself is just this object, right? But it has text here. So we do dot text is gonna be current Solana price. And also this is gonna be a very cool trick. Check this out. It's gonna be um, percentage sign, I don't know how you call it, an S and dollar. So dollar is going to be for the dollars, and this thing is a very special case. Uh, let me show you what it does. I do percentage here, and I write game manager get core price, and it's going to be a float. So we need to make it into a text, right? If a float is a number, we need to turn it into a text, so a string. We stringify, we turn it from float to a piece of text. Okay, so basically if we do this and the percent, that means we can have just this one string and enter whatever value we want inside here. If we want more values, then I think it's, it's, it's going to be something different, but let's not get into it. You can do your, your, a bit more research, you can have multiple of these in one string. But this should probably work. Let's try and see if it actually works. That should be all. And fingers crossed. Oh, you can see it's pumping. I mean, it's dumping. It's going down very quickly, but there's a bunch of numbers. It's looking very ugly, but see, it just is set to zero. That's a good sign. We can make it a bit more, uh, we can modify the, um, the current price a little bit. We can do something like this. Uh, bar mod, uh, maybe uh, snapped price, or maybe I would say rounded price. We want to just cut it to two digits after the dot. So it's going to be look prettier. A rounded price, which is also going to be a float, would be snapped, um, snapped current price, and 0 0.02, I think, uh, 0 0.1. Yeah, 0 0.1. So it means like two thing, two um, two numbers after the dot. I think this is how you ex how you do it. Snapped. So snap maybe it takes the whatever value it is and like makes it so that there's only two um, numbers after the dot. Let's see. And we return not the current price, we return the rounded price. Let's see if it will have any effect. Yep, that was it. See, it works perfectly. Amazing. Um, and also, I think it, this this looks much bigger right here. See, the text looks much bigger here. And if we enlarge it, it becomes very, very small here. So we need to go to project settings. This is a very important step as well. We go to project settings, window, and inside mode, do canvas items. This is for control and do expand. Don't worry about it too much. That's just what I use and it usually is okay. So check this out. Now it's big and if I enlarge it, it also the text also enlarges together with the screen. So it scales now a bit better. And zero, that's it. So whew, that was a tough episode. Things are gonna get much harder from this. So if you think if you thought this was hard, don't watch any further. No, but I mean, I, I'm just I'm just joking around. It's gonna be fun. See, it's fun learning together, you know, and making cool Web3 games. And uh, you know, uh, it's kind of weird that uh, I said I'm making a Web3 game, but for now we're just making a game. But that's just how it is, you know. You need to first make a game, which is already fun in itself, and then you add monetization on top of it, right? That's I mean, that's the easiest way of integrating Web3. You could go with fully on chain games, but um, but you know, fully on chain games are. are, are, are quite difficult so you would need much more knowledge for this for now let's just focus on small things so in this uh, i would say it would take around five episodes to create 
a game and then in the, in the next five episodes we're going to um, add some Web3 features on top of it. So I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next episode where we're finally going to add some interactions in the game. Bye-bye!